I wanted to give a little overview of how you can use GitHub Actions to kind of run tests on your pull requests as you make them to your Git repo. One of my Discord subscribers um, sent me this little project that has some math.js and it has some tests associated with it. And let's say when you had a team of people and they're all working on this code base, when they push changes via a PR to your repo, you want to verify that they didn't break anything, right? So we have this way to basically set up automated tests using something called GitHub Actions. If you click on this little Actions tab here, um, you have this ability to create something called Workflows. And I'll actually show you how to do that in your project. So let's go back to our code. I have this repo kind of cloned over here and pulled. And if we look at the test, it's just basically verifying that add, subtract, multiply, and divide are doing the correct things it needs to do. And um, here's the test. Sorry, I started with the actual implementation. And here's the test that just you know verifies this stuff. So if I say mpx jest, that's going to run jest over this test suite, which is great. Everything passes. And if you echo out the exit code, like so, you'll see that it prints out a zero. But if for whatever reason I were to break this logic, so I'll just put like a times here where divide was, it's going to fail and say that one of the tests failed. And again, I will echo out the exit code here and it's a one. So it's important to understand exit codes because if anything is other than a zero, then it's going to fail in your GitHub actions and your, your bash scripts that you're running in your CI CD pipeline. So keep that in mind, a little kind of key piece of information that you might not even know about. But what I wanna do is I wanna take this code and I want to set it up in a way that when I make a new pull request to my repo, it runs some workflows to run this Jest stuff automatically in GitHub Actions. So I'm going to go ahead and just check out a new branch. I'll just say like my new branch. And I want to go ahead and make a new folder here called .github. So there's like a kind of a hidden folder called GitHub. And inside of here, you put a folder called workflows. All right, and inside our workflows, I'll just make one called testing.yaml or test.yaml. You can name this whatever you want, doesn't matter. But the important part is the content you paste into this. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste some stuff I have for my clipboard, and I'm gonna walk you through this real quick. So you basically, you can name your workflow. And in this case, um, maybe I'll call this like unit tests. <laughs> and you can specify when does this thing actually run? When do you want your test to run over your code, your code base? You can specify on pull request, but I do believe there's some other things you can do. So I'll say GitHub Actions on uh, values. Let's see if they give us some different things we can do. In fact, let me go ahead and just Google for pull requests. Events that trigger workflows. So if you kind of look through the, the code base, you can see that here are all the events you can do. When someone does a pull request, when someone, I believe, pushes, you can do. Those are the main ones, pushing and pull request. Pushing is basically whenever someone pushes to a branch, and it's gonna run the workflow over that branch. So this is good if you have it set up on like your develop branch and you want your stuff to actually like do an automatic, automatic deploy to an environment when they push to develop. Or we're gonna, we're gonna focus on pull request. You can also do like different activities and stuff. It's pretty, pretty involved. So you have to like read through the docs and make sure you understand this pretty well. But we're gonna say whenever someone makes a pull request, we are gonna automatically run all this stuff all right and you can specify what type of machine it runs on so i believe if you go to the docs and again like look for maybe runs on they have different machines i believe you might just be able to put like a docker container and let me just refresh my memory so if you go to the, the runners and go see what runners they have so here's some examples they have ubuntu latest windows latest Mac OS latest, right? And they have a full list of supported runner types. And they give you a certain amount of CPUs and memory per runner. So keep that in mind because sometimes when your project is, becomes really big and you have a lot of tests and a lot of things that's running, you may run out of memory, right? So if you're using Linux or Ubuntu, you might run out of memory. So keep that in mind. You have to maybe break up your tests in a smaller way. So these are the different runners you can use. I would probably just say Ubuntu latest. It's probably fine for most, um, use cases. Um, and then for node version, this is the actual version of node that'll run on the GitHub action, right? So you could use 16, 14, 18. It depends on you and your project needs. And you can actually, you can actually put more values here. Like I could put, I want my tests to run a node 14, 16, and 18. For some reason, if you wanted to test all the different versions of the node, you can do that. And that is going to basically spin up different GitHub runners 
And for every version of node, you can actually specify, like you can use that node version in your command. So the next part is the steps um, property. This is basically the steps that your GitHub action is going to run, right? Your workflow is going to go through one by one. Um, this is all in YAML. So if you don't understand YAML, it's basically a simplified version of JSON where this is an array of things and every single hyphen here is a basically an entry in that array. Okay, so the first thing it's gonna do is gonna run this actions called checkout, which is basically gonna check out your Git repo. And then it's going to use another action called setup node, which is gonna use that node version in one of these matrices. And it's gonna basically download and install node on the machine. And then we npm install, and then we run the tests. Okay, so you can specify whatever steps that you want. Um, and typically it's, there's some like setup steps that you need followed by the actual thing that you're trying to do. Um, for right now, I'm gonna just go ahead and do node 18 and 16, I believe. But once you have this folder set up and you have this file existing and you have this thing defined, you can actually push this to your branch. So I'll just go ahead and say git commit um, am initial workflow for tests. And then I will go ahead and push that I don't know why I didn't add that file. Let me just go ahead and redo that. Um, git push my new branch, like so. So now I pushed my changes to a branch. And if I go to my repo, you'll see this yellow banner and I can actually say compare and pull request. And when I do this and I you know, set the, the base to main and I click create pull request, that's going to trigger off this event here, pull request event. And you'll see down here with the yellow little dot, it's actually running my actions. And then you can also view here that it's running node 18 and node 16. And if I look at both of these, you can kind of step through and see what steps it's doing. So it already set up the job, it did the checkout, it's using node 18, and then it's running npm install. And then once it's done installing everything, it should start running the tests. All right, so in this case, all of our tests actually failed because remember we went and we modified the divide. So when stuff fails, you can kind of see it here with the X. You can see it here at the X. This workflow completely failed. And so what this means is when someone's going through your pull request and reviewing, they can quickly see, okay, there's something wrong with this code. Do not merge this code until the person working on it can go through and fix it. All right, so let's go through and pretend like, okay, someone gave feedback and said like, hey, your code is broken. Fix it, please. Someone might review your code for the most part, you should be on it and you should just go and like see that your stuff failed and you go fix it yourself. So let's go back and just fix it ourselves. So I'll go to that test file, which is here. And we are going to basically find, oh, not the test file. We're going to go to the implementation and we're going to revert that back to a divide. All right, so I'm going to say git commit am fixing broken unit tests, or sorry, fixing broken code related to divide. All right, so let's push again. And now you'll see in a second, this thing will kick off again. So it's running some more checks. You have a yellow dot here. You can also, you can click on this yellow dot and this will also give you a pop-up that you can go to the details and stuff. Um, let's just go ahead and check out node 18 and see its status as it runs. All right, so I did npm install, it's running some tests and now it's done. Everything passed, we get a green checkbox. And node 16 is still initializing slash running. Um, and now it's finished as well. So now we have two completely passing tests. Everything's good. And you can actually look through and see like what happened. So at this point, a reviewer would come in, they would probably re look through your code and they'd be like, okay, this looks pretty good. And then they'll go ahead and approve it. Although I can't approve my own pull request, but you get the idea. Someone would approve it. And then you'll see like a green checkbox that someone approved. You can go ahead and just merge that in your main branch. So that's kind of an overview of how you can get started with GitHub Actions. Um, I know I just showed you one thing with like a test, but you can kind of expand upon it and you can add linters, you can add smoke tests, end-to-end -end tests. I don't know if you're doing integration tests, you can add that. You can add like security audits like Sneak or NPM audit. You can add something like, um, I, for I forgot the name of some of this other stuff, but basically you just set up a bunch of checks over your code base so that as developers are pushing code, you ensure that the quality of your code remains high and people don't accidentally get bugs pushed to your, your trunk. Anyway, if you enjoyed watching this, be sure to uh, give me a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, whatever. And also join my Discord if you want to talk to me directly or ask my community questions about coding. Have a good day and happy coding.